What is up, everybody? Chris, the old ass retro gamer here, back for another video game collection live stream. Today, I'm going to be talking about my Wii U collection. Not a whole lot of games in this collection. I decided to keep this uh, live stream a little bit shorter than usual because, as you can see, I got a work in progress behind me. Um, I got some new shelving. I've been wanting to put a shelving unit in this corner for years. Just keep on neglecting to do so. Finally did it. Moved all my Sega Genesis and Sega Master System games over to this side of the room. They used to be right here. And now I need to start spacing out my NES and SNES games because uh, I'm starting to stack them on top of each other because I'm completely out of room, which is why I got this. Also added two new bookshelves to the living room also. So, I've been doing a lot of work, got more to do, so I decided to keep this live stream short. So I'm just going to talk about the Wii U games in my collection today instead of both the Wii U and the Xbox One like I mentioned last week. So, why am I doing this video game collection live stream series? It's not to brag, it's not to be like, look at all these games I have and you don't type of thing. It's just to video, uh, have a, a, a visual record of everything in my collection in case there's some kind of catastrophe like a robbery or a fire or like the floor collapses for me having way too much crap in my apartment. But it's also a lot of really good content for the channel. Keeps it alive. Keeps people coming in. Get to talk to people while I do it. It's awesome. Um, I got my shelving cap in algebra from Best Buy. Uh, this one here is actually the one that used to be in my living room. I didn't like that it had this little mini shelf separating the two like DVD size shelves. So I moved it in here so I could use it for some storage. And I bought two new shelving units to put out in the living room that are completely adjustable. So I can make them DVD sized, Blu-ray sized, whatever. Um, if you want, I can send you the link when the stream is done to show you what I got. It was about, they were just slightly over, I think, $100 each. Had them delivered to the house. That's kind of nuts. I heard dragging yesterday <laughs> when I got home from work. I heard dragging outside, opened up my back door to see that there's <laughs> shelving units on my back step. Cool, I will do so. So let's get to the games. So Wii U was another system that I was not interested in at all. Um, when I got back into collecting in 2013, I was like, okay, the Wii has some pretty good games, even though I found it to be completely gimmicky when it first came out. Grew to like it. Uh, but when it came to the Wii U, there was that confusion going on with the console. Is it an addition to the Wii? Is it a brand new console all of its own? What's with this gigantic pad with a screen in it that looks like a freaking iPad? I'm like, what is the what is this thing? So, did a little research, found out that yes, it is its own console. They should not have called it the Wii U. If there were anything called it the Wii 2 or something. And um, I still wasn't interested in it because I was like, I don't want to be controlling games with this gigantic freaking... I thought it was going to be heavy-ass controller. So I told my girlfriend at the time, I was like, yeah, that thing, no, it's not ever going to be in my house. I'm like, that's stupid. And then as it went on, I was like, yeah, look, all these third-party companies just jump and ship. Nobody cared. Um, everyone was complaining. All it had was, like, first-party and maybe some second-party games coming out for it. it. It was mostly digital games that were doing things, like on the Nintendo eShop and all that, that uh, was keeping it alive, aside from, like, when Super uh, Smash Brothers came out. Uh, so... I didn't really take interest in it until, I want to say it was 20, 20, late 2014, I want to say. Um, I started watching Game Grumps, and they were streaming the Super Mario 3D World, and I was I watched every episode. There was like 100 episodes of that freaking series, and I was like, I watched every one of them. I was like, I want to play this game so bad, so I decided to, you know, forget what I had said, and I went and picked up a a copy or a console at the local target got a copy of 3d world and man i absolutely ended up falling in love with the wii u like absolutely i had a playstation 4 i got a xbox one after i got my wii u a few months after i got my wii u and i still considered at the time the wii u my favorite console of the three now the ps4 has taken over yep see great minds man <laughs> um and yet yeah, until like, the, the really good games started coming out for the PS4. The Wii U was my favorite console of that generation. Eventually, the PS4 took over because lots and lots of great games came out. My collection will reflect that once I get to those live streams. Um, but I basically signed on for the console when it was just about to die. 
I want to say had maybe like a year left in it by the time I bought mine. And after that, Nintendo was just like, this thing, get it out of here. We're moving on to better pastures. Uh, not to say the Switch is bad. I like the Switch just as fi- just fine, but I honestly prefer the Wii U to the Switch because the Switch has nothing but Wii U games on it. <laughs> they didn't sell on the Wii U. Let's just throw them on the Switch so people can still play these. We don't have to do any extra work because I put everything on a little cartridge. But anyway, I really like the Wii U. I, I do not have it hooked up at the time, at this moment. Um, it's actually back in its box to make room for the Switch out there. But time to time I do take it out of mothballs to play it. And I realized I need to go and grab something very quick. I will be right back. Stay tuned! I'm back. (laughs) I said I would. You calling me a liar? I needed to grab some of the uh, boxes for the special editions that I have. Okay, so, like I said, I don't have a whole huge lot of Wii U games. Like I said, uh, didn't have a whole lot of support, so there weren't a lot of games to buy. Uh, There's maybe three more games I want to add to my collection before I just completely call it a quits on the console, collecting for it at least. Yeah, I want to say three. But I pretty much have everything I want, so I don't really go out of my way to get these anymore. But let's start off with Adventure Time. Explore the dungeon because I don't know. I mentioned this in the 3DS live stream last week that I've only seen maybe three episodes of this. And uh, I was prepared. Uh, it just my computer didn't want to boot up fast enough, and I ended up having to rush to get everything ready to start. That's why I started a couple minutes late. Eat it. <laughs> um... I'm not really familiar with the cartoon all that much. Like I said, I've only seen maybe three episodes. But I wanted to get this because it's a Legend of Zelda, like the original OG Legend of Zelda clone type game, like a dungeon crawl type thing, top down. It's also made by Way Forward Technologies, which is one of my favorite developers ever. So I wanted to have a console version of this to go along with the handheld version of this. If this came out for the Switch, I would probably get rid of this and the 3DS version so I could play it either way. But I don't think that's going to happen. But it's actually a pretty decent game. I am I played this one a little bit. I have not completed it. I want to say I spent maybe like an hour and a half, two hours playing it when I first got it. And it's entertaining. I need to spend more time with it. But I probably would have more to say about it if I was a fan of the cartoon to see if it actually like felt like the cartoon come to life. Uh, I need to get the other game based on this film series. That's one of the games that's left for me to collect, but I actually hear it's kind of hard to find. The Amazing Spider-Man 2, I still need to get the one for the first movie, but uh, it's a, from what I understand, a pretty decent Spider-Man game based on what I consider to be a terrible series of Spider-Man movies. I couldn't stand the first Amazing Spider-Man, so I never bothered watching the second, which is why I never bothered with any of these games. But everyone tells me, like Jason of Corpse Flood Gaming tells me, that these games are actually pretty decent Spider-Man games. And I've been getting back into Spider-Man. If you watch the 360, um, Xbox 360 live streams that I did, I went out and bought a couple for that console. But it's pretty decent from what I have seen, from what I've heard. I have not had a chance to play because I got this after I had put my Wii U back into storage. But it looks pretty decent. Like I said, I'm not a fan of the films in this series, but... The game actually looks like it's probably going to be better than the films, at least in my opinion. Picked this one up because it was there. I got it for a couple of bucks, and I was like, whatever. Uh, Angry Birds Trilogy. Yes, this was on the list of games that I wanted to buy. I wanted to have at least one physical Angry Birds game to play somewhere. And it depended on which version I found first. It could have been the one for the 3DS. It could have been one for any console. This was the first version that I found at a store. It's super cheap, so I picked it up. And it has Angry Birds 1. What is it? 
three best-selling Angry Birds games in one. Over 800 levels, 99 exclusive, and 140 hours of addictive gameplay. It doesn't tell you which games. I know there's one, two, and I doubt Star Wars is in here. So, I don't know. Maybe it's the the pig one? I don't know. But I haven't, I have not booted this up because got this after I put my Wii U away. <coughs> for good things about the Adventure Time games. I've never seen the show, so I've never picked up. Yeah, I've only seen episodes of uh, Adventure Time on Hulu. I remember, like, it popped up as a suggestion one time, and I was like, oh, I know people talk about that. My cousin was talking about it one time, who is an adult. <laughs> and I was like, okay, and I watched, like, three episodes, and I'm like, yeah, it's kind of funny, but I just never was interested in continuing with it. I mean, if, I, if I'm if i bored, maybe, down the line. Um, I bought this a long time ago, and I still haven't played it. <laughs> but I think, to me, it looks like a freaking phone game, like a cell phone game. Uh, the Avengers Battle for Earth... I picked it up because I'm like, ooh, an Avengers game. Something, you know, Marvel for the Wii U. You know, you don't see many of these. So I picked it up and I got it at a half price book. So I don't remember for how much. But then it turns out it looks like that there's like a Power Rangers cell phone game or smartphone game where basically it's like you have pre prearranged moves that you just select at the bottom of the screen and you just hit them in order to pull them off. You don't have to do any controller movements or anything. It's like you hit which one you want to do and your character does it. And, you know, it hit, it might hit, it might not. This, it looks the same exact thing, except you use the pad to draw the symbol for whatever move you want to do on it with your finger or the stylus, and your character will do it. So, after I bought it, I was like, oh, that. <laughs> so, I know this is available for other consoles, too, but I don't know how that would pull it off, or how they would pull it off. I don't know. So, I never really played it. This is probably the last Wii U game, unless there's a Just Dance game that came out for this year. Uh, but this, I think, is the last Wii U game to be officially released for the console. And it is Axiom Verge, the Multiverse Edition. This is what I had to go run out there to pick up. I forgot about this. Um, I still kept the little slip that came with it to show off that it is for the Wii U. Um, the Multiverse Edition, this is the exact same thing I have for the PS4, but I like the game so much I decided to buy it again. The original plan was, when this game was announced to be coming out physically, it was only a DLC, or a, a digital game, for the longest time. My original plan was, oh, out of all the consoles that it's being released for, I'll get it for the Wii U. Because, uh, being a little OCD, I was like, I need more games in the A's in my collection. Because my collection was very, like, end of the alphabet heavy. And I wanted to have some more games toward the beginning. Plus, I love the game. So, uh, this Multiverse Edition comes with a poster... Which also serves as a map, which is sort of cheating. <laughs> I wish I had that when I started playing the PS2 or PS4 version because I got completely st uh, stuck in that one. Also comes with an art book, which is pretty rad. Guy Thomas Happ, the guy who made this game, did every single thing to make it. He made the graphics, he did the programming, he did the music, he did everything. Uh, so we also have a making of documentary on Blu-ray as well as a soundtrack, which I do have on vinyl. Bought the soundtrack long before I ever played the game because I heard so many good things about it. Close this up. But it is a Metroidvania. One of the best Metroidvanias I've played, even though I got completely stuck in it. But it never frustrated me to the point where I was like, I don't want to play this again. I just ended up like moving on to other games like I usually do. Here's the actual game itself, separate, that I keep on my shelf. It's a fantastic game. Need to play it if you haven't already. Part 2 is coming out for the Switch pretty soon, so get on that. What's up, Omega Ace? How's it going? Should have picked up that version. Heard the gamepad really works well with it. Oh, uh, Axiom Verge. Uh, like I said, it's still sealed, but haven't done it. I should probably open this up because I need to play it. Uh, I also picked this one up because it was dirt cheap at the local half price books, and that's Batman Arkham City Armored Edition. Um, I. Got rid of my PlayStation 3 version because there was a compilation coming out for the PS4 that had Arkham uh, Asylum and Arkham City on it, and I planned to get that. Uh, so I sold it way in advance of that coming out, and then I went to Half Price Books and I saw this, and I was like, oh. Well, it's another game toward the beginning of the alphabet for the Wii U collection, so why not? And I have not played this because I, after I got this, I ended up getting that Return to Arkham compilation played through that version which is fantastic. But I'm curious what's different about this because this is the Armored Edition. Does it say anything? Oh, it includes all the DLC, which is basically what I have on the PlayStation 4 right now. Okay. Battle Armored Tech Mode? Bat Mode? 
All new armored suits provide power-ups for Batman and Catwoman during combat. Oh, okay. So, it's basically the exact same thing. Open it right now. God damn it, Captain, you're killing me. Mm, look at that. Yeah, there goes the value right down the shitter. Look, no manual. Limited run. But yeah, limited run. There was a real complicated story about the release of Axiom Verge. Like, one company bought the rights from Thomas Happ to release it. Uh, on the Wii U, and then, like, they ended up not having enough money to finish the print run, and then another company stepped in, and then that turned into a fraud thing, and then Limited Run was like, F this, we're just gonna buy it outright and release it ourselves, and it was the only Wii U game they've ever released. So, good on you, Limited Run, you did the right thing. Yeah, I can see you, Omega Ace, I saw you. What's up, Waves? How's it going, Peter? Bayonetta 2. So, this took some doing. Um... Around the time I really started to get into collecting for the Wii U was when Nintendo was starting to, to me, like, really abuse the console. Like, they started neglecting it. They started, like, re-releasing, like, this. Okay, so Bayonetta 2, the, ver the original version that came out comes with a, a, a copy of Bayonetta 1 remastered for the Wii U on a separate disc. So you get two games for the price of one. And I kept on saying to myself when I see it at the store, I'll pick it up later, I'll pick it up later. I got other games I want to play right now, I'll pick it up when I'm done. And I just never got around to it. And then out of nowhere, Nintendo starts doing like this. We're going to re-release this without the first game anymore. It's going to be just Bayonetta 2. Uh, and a lot of other games are going to become these greatest hits versions like Pikmin 3. Like disappeared off the shelves for the longest time. Because they were talking about re-releasing it in like a greatest hits edition or something. And like the price of that skyrocketed. So like for a while, I was looking for all these games that they were messing with. And I started to look for this one exclusively. And no one had it. No store had a copy of it. No GameStop in my area had it. So I ended up having to go to a GameStop that is, like, on the south side of Chicago to get a copy of this in, like, this really crappy area. Like, I walk, I walk, I got out of my car and I was just kind of like, I might get shot. <laughs> and I walked in, snagged it. They, they were holding it for me. And I walked right back out and I took off the hell out of there. And, like, I never saw this again. And then Nintendo screwed everyone on the Switch over by doing the exact same thing, by only releasing the version that comes with Bayonetta 1 physical, like I think in England or something, or overseas somewhere. I have played a little bit of Bayonetta 1, and I liked it. It's just, like, beyond bonkers. And I played a little bit of Part 2 to see what it was like, and it's just as crazy. But I really like it. I just need to set aside time. These games are actually on my uh, Backlog Roulette on the uh, Super Enabler Brothers show that I do with Jason of Corpse Blood Gaming. Because I need to sit down and play through them. Because I hear they are fantastic. What I played of them, I did enjoy. It's like a crazy God of War style game. But you have guns in your shoes. <laughs> like your high heels are, are guns. <laughs> and you just keep evolving your powers over the course of the game. Because you're like a witch. Like a witch assassin. Or whatever. And like you just evolve these powers. And by the end of the game, you're like the super powered god thing. I uh, still haven't opened this one up. I think I got this when I was in L.A. visiting my brother. I can't be sure. But it was another one where I was like, I need to get games for the beginning of the alphabet. So, The Book of Unwritten Tales 2. I think this is a point-and-click adventure. And that sounded really interesting to me. I'm like, I need one. And it would probably work very well on the gamepad, you know, because of the touchscreen. So, that fascinated me. And I found this, like, dirt cheap. Like, we're talking under $5. So, I picked it up. And, yeah, still haven't played it. Sadly. But I like point-and-click adventures. I love... I uh, like those old LucasArts games and stuff like that. I recently played through um, uh, la, 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 Grim Fandango on the PS4. Great game. I use wife's high heels as guns. <laughs> uh, this game was actually teased in Super Mario 3D World, Captain Toad Tra Treasure Tracker. I know that Nintendo was considering giving Captain Toad his own game, but they didn't think people would buy it or be interested in it. So they snuck levels like test levels into 3d world as like bonus levels and they're really fun because you you know it's like you have a level and it's self-contained like a little box or whatever and you basically control the camera to turn the level around so you can get different vantage points because it's like a mc escher painting from certain views or each level is kind of like that and it's basically toad trying to find treasures in each level you have so many you have to find before the level is complete do that go to the next one and uh, the game is super fun. I really like what was in Super Mario 3D World, and that made me want to get this when it came out. But 
I waited on this one also. I kept on saying I'll get it eventually, maybe when it drops in price. Then I realized Nintendo never drops prices on their games, which is stupid. Uh, and then it became really hard to find for a long time. I don't know why. Uh, a lot of places were out of it. The price jumped up again. And then I went to a Target in my area, and they had one sitting there, one sitting there. And I was like, just give it to me. I don't care if it's regular price. Just give it to me because I don't want to pay 80 for it. There is a big box. Is it one that comes with like a, uh, an Amiibo cap? Pick this one up because at the time, this was going to be the last game released for the Wii U. And I haven't opened it because I'm going to get all these games for the Xbox One so I can have all of them on one shelf for one console. I have two of the four. Uh, we're talking Darksiders, the War Mastered Edition. Uh, this is a 3D action adventure game that a lot of people compare to like Ocarina of Time. <laughs> uh, where you play as one of the uh, four horsemen of the apocalypse. And I think each game you're playing as a different horseman, which is kind of interesting. Uh, but I have not gotten around to playing it yet. This one is still sealed. I'm still waiting until I can find a copy of the War Master Edition for the Xbox One. Because I have Part 3 and I have uh, Genesis. I just need to get 1 and 2. The Toad Amiibo? Awesome. I never... Yeah, I just bought the one that I found. I just found the standalone version by itself. And I was like, just give it to me. <laughs> Am I missing something else over here? Hang on a second! No, I'm not! I thought I left out another big box, something or other. Thanks for reminding me, Cap. I thought I bought... I did! Hang on! Yes, I did. Shit! Thanks, Cap. You reminded me that I had a big box game with an amiibo in it. <laughs> Got me, bro. Solidarity. <laughs> but yeah, I still need to play through this series. Uh, it's on my backlog roulette for the podcast. So, haven't played this one, but I wanted this one because it was supposed to be the last released, or the last physically released Wii U game. And then the Axiom Verge became a thing. I haven't opened this one up yet, but I got this, like, $2 brand new, I think, at Best Buy. And it was uh, right after I, or right before I had found this version of it for the PS, or this PS3 version, which I would rather play. Uh, but Deus Ex, Human Revolution, the director's cut... Cyberpunk is one of my favorite science fiction genres or subgenres of all time, and I, I always wanted to play through these games. But uh, <laughs> after I bought this, I saw the one for the PlayStation 3, and I was just kind of like, oh, I'll take that one because the Wii U is in storage now. I'll play that one instead. Uh, but it looks like you can use the control pad to show like a map or whatever, which is all right. But the graphics obviously are not going to be nearly as good as the PlayStation 3 version, so there's that. But, uh, yeah, third-person action RPG. There you go. Oh, sorry, first, is it first-person? I think these are first-person games. Yeah, I haven't played any of them. Also on my Backlog Roulette, the first game. Okay, so this game became, like, a hot commodity for some reason. Like, it was gonna get released, and then it kind of didn't get released, and then quantities became really limited, and then all of a sudden they just flooded the market with it, and, it, it, you know, whatever. Uh, and we're talking Devil's Third. <laughs> this is like a, a really bizarre M-rated game released by Nintendo. This is a second party game. And, uh, like, you couldn't find it. And, like, you could only get it online for a little while. And then, like, people were buying, like, 100 copies of it and trying to sell them for, like, inflated prices on eBay. I remember Pat, the NES Punk, made a big deal about some guy doing that. And then, all of a sudden, the market became flooded with him. And he couldn't get rid of him to save his life. So he was not going to make a profit. I ended up like putzing around on amazon one day and they had them in stock like i kept i would check like every other day to see if they had any and one day they did and i was just like okay buy it now got it and everyone was whining oh i can't find a copy i just gotta be patient and vigilant that's all you gotta do uh but this is a third person action game it's kind of like a, a weird beat-em-up where you play as like an assassin i tried it out when i first got it to see what the big deal was and yeah it's a little clunky but it's actually pretty fun it's still stupid expensive really jesus I don't understand why. It's not like it's like a super awesome game or anything. Donkey Kong Country, Tropical Freeze. This is what? Part 5, I want to say, in the series? At least for like the mainline games. Not talking like the Game Boy ones. Um, still need to play Donkey Kong Country Returns on the Wii. This is the sequel to that. And uh, yeah, side-scrolling platformer. I'm glad they decided to keep it side-scrolling. You know, horizontally scrolling like the old school games. Obviously, the graphics are very improved. I hear this game is incredibly hard, though. So, on... What? 
Devil's Third is 220 bucks. Wow. I got it for, like, normal price. <laughs> that is freaking crazy. Still need to play through these games. I, shit, I've only played through the first Donkey Kong Country. I need to get the other two games for the Super Nintendo so I can play through those. Got this dirt cheap, I think, brand new at a half-price books. I don't remember how much I paid, but Epic Mickey 2, The Power of Two. Um, I do believe I have the first game for the original Wii. OG Wii, do I? Epic? 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 No, I don't. I thought I did. I guess I don't. Um, I know I have one for the 3DS. Maybe I should just go out and pick up the copy for the original Wii. That's why I have them both. Uh, but this one is, now you have two people you can play as. You can either play as Mickey or Oswald, the, I guess he was like the pre-Mickey Mouse <laughs> or whatever. But it's an adventure game. Big whoop. I still haven't opened it because I want to play the first one. Got this because it was there, but it's actually kind of cool. I'm a fan of the movie series, but we got Fast and Furious Showdown. This is also available for a couple of other consoles, but I figured I'd just get it for the Wii U because. Uh, but yeah, it's a racing combat game. It's kind of like playing Burnout in the Fast and Furious universe. It's okay. It's not the greatest thing ever. It could have been a hell of a lot better. Uh, it's way better than the uh, the mobile phone game, which I have played, but there's that. Licensed games. you got to take them when you can get them on the Wii U. Like, there was not a lot of third-party stuff out there, which is kind of sad. Uh, game and Wario. I had been looking for this for the longest time. Every time I go to, like, a, a GameStop or something or some or any used media store, uh, I try to find a copy of this because I wanted to have something to play with my friends. I have the um, GameCube controller adapter for the Wii U, and I, wanted, and I bought it so I could play multiplayer Smash Brothers with my friends. But I wanted other games where I can play multiplayer because this has five play one to five players, craziness. Um, and yeah, this is just a bunch of little mini games that last for a couple of seconds. And I guess it's how many you can get through with each person who determines who wins. And a lot of them use the pad in a various ways. I know, look, one of them here shoots an arrow. You drag your finger across the bow and let go, and you target things. And yeah. Wanted to get at least one of these games in my collection somewhere. WarioWare series is a lot of fun. Yeah, I, I, every time I have like a party where I, like the intention is to bring people over to my place so we can play some video games, I'd always forget that I have those. And we'd always end up playing like a fighting game or Smash Brothers or uh, like a first person shooter multiplayer game like Halo or Time Splitters or something like that. So this one surprised the hell out of me that this got released at all. Um, I remember this started off as a ripoff of Super Mario Brothers, a legit ripoff for the Commodore 64, and ended up getting like pulled off the shelves because of it, like Nintendo threatened to sue. But the series kept going. Don't ask me why, but Gianna Sisters, Twisted Dreams, this is the director's cut. It's a side-scrolling platformer, kind of like Mario Brothers. Not super like Mario Brothers, it's more like Rayman now a little bit. Um... But the thing about this one was John and Sisters in the Commodore 64 game, it was like Mario Brothers, you got John and Sisters. You had two characters that are almost the exact same thing, punching blocks with their heads, just like in the Mario Brothers, the original Super Mario Brothers. Uh, the thing about this one is there's a light world and a dark world, and you start off playing as like the light world version of the John and Sister, and then you can, I think it's touch an icon, or was it a button? It's been a while since I played it. And you can switch over to the Dark World version, and then the world changes. Like, one is, like, there's different kind of gems you can pick up in each one. It's really, really fun. It's it's interesting. Graphically, I'm, like, for a game that I never knew anything about, I was playing it, and, like, you get to certain bosses, like the one on the back here, and it looks phenomenal. I mean, the graphics are really, really good. Gameplay took a little bit of getting used to, but it is pretty fantastic, I think. I just need to get back into it. Because, like I said, it's like playing Rayman, almost. This game, oh man, this was one of the games I wanted the Wii U for, and that's Hyrule Warriors. Um, I like those Musou or Musou games or whatever you call them, the, the Dynasty Warriors style games, and it it was like beyond amazing to me that Nintendo licensed out their Legend of Zelda characters to Koi Tecmo to develop a game for them in that style, based with, you know, with these Legend of Zelda characters. And I was just like, yes, I need that in my life. Get to play as Link, taking out waves and waves of Ganondorf soldiers. That just sounds amazing. I need it in my life. And yes, I played through this game. The remixes of the soundtracks from all the different games, fuck yes. Uh, <laughs> um, all the different characters you can end up playing as that you unlock as you play, great. 
the um, like the the 3D environments based on all the other games, amazing. I I've, everything about it is fantastic. The gameplay is great too. Yes, it does get a little monotonous at times. You are fighting waves and waves of enemies, mostly the same kind over and over again. But you eventually come across ones that require different tactics. There's boss battles and stuff. The final boss like drove me absolutely bonkers uh, when you're playing as Zelda. It was just <laughs> but absolutely love Hyrule Warriors. I wanted to get it for the Switch so I could play it on the go, but I just keep on saying, like, nah, I'll get it eventually. There's also one for the 3DS, which sounded interesting, but now that it's available on the Switch, I really don't need to do that. Get the Wii U version. <laughs> I still want to get the Switch one so I can play it on the go if I need if I want to, like if I need to bring it to work or something. Uh, Kirby and the Rainbow Curse. Uh, so this is probably one of the only Kirby games I've ever bought day one. I pre-ordered it on Amazon, and I was really excited about it because every time I wait on a Kirby game, for some reason they jump up in price down the road, and I was like, I'm not paying eighty dollars for a Wii U game with Kirby in it. You know, the what is it, the Kirby's Return to Dreamland? For some reason, that was super expensive for a long time. So I was like, I ain't doing that again. I'm not waiting. So I decided to pick this one up in on day one, and I was really disappointed in it. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is exactly one of the reasons why I did not want to get a Wii U to begin with. And it's because of that gimmicky pad on the controller. And you need to use the stylus on the pad to draw these paths for Kirby to roll down to get him through each level. And, yeah, that's all, you know, good and all that, you know. I guess this is a remake. I think this is a remake of a Nintendo DS game or something. But, anyway... You end up just looking at the pad and never looking at your TV screen. So there's really no reason for you to have your TV on at all unless someone is watching you play. Because you're doing nothing but looking at the screen so you can make sure you're drawing your paths correctly. And I hated it. I absolutely hated it. So I only kept this in my collection because Kirby game. But the gameplay really stinks. I really do not like the direction they took for this one. Usually every, every, every Kirby game has a different gimmick. The gimmick for that one I thought was bad. I bought this one, Canvas Curse. I don't know. I've never played that one. Um, this one I only bought because of Adam Korolik, who's another Chicago-based YouTuber about video games. Um, he said that he thought that this game was going to be one that got limited release, was going to become really expensive down the line. And if like you want to resell something down the line, this would be the one to do it with because it's probably not going to get a big release. And that is Legend of K Anniversary. It's a remaster of a PlayStation 2 game that I never heard of ever until this came out. And then I looked into it and I was like, huh, what in the hell possessed people to remaster it for the Wii U of all consoles? But anyway, it's a thing. And it came in a white case instead of a blue one. I still haven't opened it. Uh, but it is just another 3D action platformer, kind of like a Jack and Daxter game or a Ratchet and Clank. Uh, I don't, like I said, I don't understand why this got re-released. I think it got released on the Switch too. Was it that big of a hit back in the day? I don't know. I never even heard of it, which still surprises the hell out of me. But maybe the fact that I have the white case means something. Maybe it'll be worth something. I don't know. I should probably check into that. Still haven't opened this because it frightens the hell out of me. I don't know if I want to put all the time that it's going to take to beat this game in. Uh, it'll take up all my life. Uh, that's Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. I bought this long before I got my Switch. I was like, okay, so I need this game in my collection to tide me over until I can get a Wii U. Or, uh, sorry, a Switch. And just like with the GameCube moving over to the Wii, uh, there was a Legend of Zelda game that crossed over between both consoles. One came out toward the end of the life of the GameCube and was one of the first games released for the Wii when that was released. And that was um, Twilight Princess. And the version on um, the GameCube was the one that was ended up being worth more money. And yeah, so I figured the same thing was going to happen here. I'm eventually going to get a Switch. I'll eventually get Breath of the Wild for the Switch. I'll get the Wii U version just in case. And uh, if it becomes worth money, I'll get rid of it because I'll have it for the Switch. I don't need it for two consoles, which is why it hasn't been opened yet because I'm going to play the Switch version if I do. Still haven't played it because, like I said, it frightens me because of the length of the game. It'll suck up all my free time if I start playing it, but whatever. Here's the one that required me to go and get that box. Uh, so we're just talking about this. Twilight Princess HD Remaster. Uh, I bought the big box version. I pre-ordered this. comes with the Wolf Link Amiibo. Still not played through this game. I started playing it on the Wii when that first came out, and I got distracted and stopped playing it, and I need to go back and do that. There's all these Zelda games that I need to go back and play. Damn it, Chris. 
Uh, but it looks fantastic. I tried it out when I first got it just to see how it looked. And Jesus, it is a big upgrade. And I'm not a Wii U person, so I didn't get many of these uh, Amiibo packaged ones. But whatever. It's in there. Yeah. Yeah. Favorite Zelda game. And I know this one is Captain Algebra's all-time favorite Zelda game. And we're talking the Wind Waker HD remaster. Can't ban me in my own stream, bro. <laughs> I bought this because I got it used. I didn't want to pay for it brand new. Because this is my least favorite Zelda game out there. Do not like it. Do not like the art style. Do not like the gameplay. Do not like a lot about it. I mean, yes, it's a new game in the Zelda, you know universe which i love so i had to have it but as a game i don't think it's very fun just like i know captain Hunt. throw it in the trash <laughs> um but yeah i wanted to have it just because i want to have a complete legend of zelda collection just like i have a complete uh, metroid collection right now i want to have a complete legend of zelda collection and had to have this in order to do that found it pretty cheap at a used store i think this i got this at that uh disc replay place that closed down a couple years ago and uh yeah, I pop it in to try it out when it first came out to see how it looked in HD and in widescreen. And I was like, yeah, it looks like rant. <laughs> uh, Lego City Undercover. Uh, this is, I talked about this during the 3DS stream last week, that this game became a really hard game to find for some reason and jumped up in price because it is basically Lego Grand Theft Auto. Yeah, I know. I figured you'd probably end up... Everyone everyone who's a Legend of Zelda fan is going to eventually have that in their, one of those games in their collection. I mean, I, I have it for the GameCube. I also have it for that. Uh, I don't think it came out for any other console, did it? I'm just waiting for the Switch version, as I'm sure you are too. <laughs> but yeah, Gr Lego Grand Theft Auto. And I don't know if that was the reason why it became really hard to find and jumped up in price, but I was like interested in it because i wanted to play a lego game that wasn't like the typical lego games where all it is is about you collecting lego pieces and shit so i was like okay cool a real game in the lego universe fine and then i go to buy it and it's like 80 dollars. i'm like why it's a lego game there's millions of copies of this out there apparently not um and then eventually they released like a greatest hits edition of this and the price of the standard edition dropped dramatically and i got it for like 20 dollars. so there's that and it's actually pretty fun and uh, at the same time, I got the Lego movie video game, which I still have not played. But I assume it's going to be just like all the other Lego games. But you're going through the movie based on Lego instead of Star Wars or Harry Potter or Lord of the Rings or Jurassic Park. <laughs> and I still have not watched the movie either. I should probably get on that. Okay, so these... Oh, shit. Which one was it? This? I think it was this one. One... No, I think I can't remember which one it was. One of these became like one of the hardest games to find for the Wii U. I think it's the Sonic one. So we got Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Winter Games, Sochi 2014, and Mario and Sonic at the Rio 2016 Olympic Games. I think this was the one that was like super expensive. Uh, this one I have still sealed. This one I found dirt cheap somewhere. I don't remember what it was, but yeah, it's basically. Bunch of mini games based on the Winter Olympics with Sonic and Mario and other Nintendo characters in it. Yippee Yahoo. Um, but the Rio one, I think, was the one that was like dirt. Like, you could not find this for under $100 at one point in time. It was that expensive. Like, it got released to coincide with the Summer Olympics. And then, like, when the Olympics stopped, like, two months after the Olympics were over, like, it got recalled and there were no more copies out there. And everyone wanted one, including me, because I was like, I want all the Mario games. I want all the Mario games. Uh, and eventually I got lucky and I found some guy on eBay slipping, which is my superpower. And I got this for, I think, 70 And I was like, that's about as high as I was willing to go to pay for this. Because I know these games are not the greatest. But whatever. This was just more of the same, more uh, Mario and Sonic themed Olympic events. Rhythmic gymnastics with <laughs> one of the princesses. I can never remember her name. What is that? What is the girl? Oh, I can never remember her name. The one from Galaxy. Jesus. Rugby, dual beach volleyball, 100 meter racing, football. Oh, Christ. <laughs> but yeah, I wanted to have it in my collection and I was willing to pay a little more than I usually would, but whatever. Uh, this game I bought the day I bought my Wii U. Rosalina. I can never remember her name. 
Mario Kart 8, the day that I bought my Wii U, it came with another game that's in this stack here. Uh, but this was the one that I wanted. Because uh, other than Mario 3D World, um, I'd been watching people stream Mario Kart 8. And then I went to like the local Target a week before I bought my Wii U. And they had a kiosk set up with the Wii U and Mario Kart 8 in it. And I played it. And I like I was like a little freaking kid that you see that is just hogging the kiosk. Will not let anyone else play it. I stood there and I played it for about an hour. And I was like, I need this console. I really do. I was, I was, I was, I made a mistake. I was wrong. <laughs> I needed it in my life. And the day that I bought my console, I bought this game also. And it is absolutely fantastic. I never bought any of the uh, DLC for it, but the tracks, everything about it. This is one of my favorite Mario Kart games out there. Um, and then I ended up getting Deluxe for the Switch because it has all of the DLC stuff from that in it. Mario Tennis Ultra Smash. Uh, I remember I really liked. Whatever Mario Tennis game there was before this. Was it on the Game Boy? I think? Game Boy Color or something? Uh, I enjoyed that and I wanted to get this updated version. But, for some reason, Nintendo still refused to drop the price on us. Even after the Wii U was discontinued. Like, you would go to Target and it was still 50 bucks. I'm like, I'm not paying 50 bucks for a Mario sports game. I mean, they're good, but they're not that good. And then I ended up finding a used copy of it for like 20 somewhere. And I was like, fine. But, yeah. Mario Tennis. Whatever. Where was that? Was that the Game Boy Color that I played that on? I think it was. Still haven't opened this one up. Um, it's one of the few... Oh, the details on the back of the box. What is that supposed to mean? Oh. Um, so I love the Telltale Games series. Like the Telltale Games, the company. You know, they make those adventure games. They're like point-and-click adventures. Based on weird properties. And they did a Minecraft one. Mar Minecraft story mode. This is the complete adventure. Um, if I was going to buy this for any console, it's probably just going to be for this. Because I wanted to have at least one Telltale game for this console. And then after that's when I realized that every time they release one of these things, the entire game is not on the disc. Usually you have to download. Um, like it'll come with episode one on the disc. And a code to download the rest of the part of the game. Or the rest of the parts of the game. And I'm like, no, just put everything on the freaking disc. How hard is it? Like, Back to the Future that they did, like the first one that they did, is all on one disc. Why can't everyone be like that? So I just noticed that it said details on the back of the box because it says episodes 1 through 8 are in here. And then I look at the back and it says, Disc includes all five episodes of season 1 and three episodes of the Adventure Pass. So I guess that the full original game is on here, but the expansion stuff is not, which is stupid. I doubt it's available anymore <laughs> because Telltale's kind of gone and the Wii U is defunct. But I love those Telltale games, so I had to have at least one. And Minecraft is not something I'm interested in at all. But something like that, fine. But the actual Minecraft game, no. I don't know why this is still in my collection. <laughs> I never played it. Oh, yeah. Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate. Um, I've never played a Monster Hunter game in my life. This is probably going to go away. I'm probably going to sell this. Uh, I've never played any of these games. Probably never will. Online. I don't know if this one actually will let you play single player or not. Don't hunt alone, single player with two AI companions, or join up to three players online. Why? Wouldn't be able to play this now anyway because there's no more online for the Wii U. So yeah, this is getting set aside because this is going the way of the dodo. Had to get a copy of this, but it came you know, jacked up in the mail. Look at that. Someone split it. Uh, but the NES pack, or NEX Remix pack, uh, this has how many games on it? Doesn't really say. It has NEX Remix 1 and 2 on there, plus the original Super Mario Brothers reversed, starring Luigi, and uh, I can also compete in the World Championships Remix. But it basically has every Nintendo released uh, NES game on here. And there's like uh, versions of the game that have like challenges you need to accomplish. And I had a lot of fun doing it. I wanted to get the one for the 3DS also, but I never did. But this is the version that I ended up going with. But I had a lot of fun messing around with it. And the challenges that they uh they want you to do with each game are really hard at times and other times like really really fun and like things that you never thought to do in certain games you you get to do which are, which is kind of cool this is the game that came with the wii u that i bought uh new super mario brothers u and new super luigi u i wanted to get the mario kart 8 edition uh but the car the target that i went to didn't have any of those in stock they only had this one so i went with it and, uh, yeah, I'm not a fan of the new Super Mario Brothers games. I think they're slow and 
badly paced and just not fun. And I really wanted to play, especially after watching the Game Grumps play Super Mario 3D World. So, um, yeah, I was a bit disappointed that this is the version that I ended up having to get for with my Wii U because uh, I couldn't find any copies of 3D World right off the bat. I ended up having to go off of eBay to get that one. But, yeah, it came with the console, so I can't really complain. Uh, Nintendo Land, this is like the demo disc or demo game. You don't like the Wii U one? Yeah, I haven't even bothered with the one for the Switch either. Uh, Nintendo Land is like a... It's like a a tech demo for the Wii U to show off what the gamepad can do. It's just a bunch of really stupid mini games. Each one requires you to use the pad in a different way. Um, one is some are tapping, some is like, you know, drawing things, some others like flinging things. It's just, it's okay to play for like 20 minutes and then just you move on to something more complicated, but it's okay. And it's multiplayer too. Explore the ways to play with the Wii U gamepad. It's okay. I don't really need it. I mean, there's there's stuff to do in it that are entertaining. Like the Metroid game mini game in there was kind of fun. I don't remember many of the others. Uh, Pac Man and the Ghostly Adventures. I picked this up for like three or four dollars. I think at half price books. And uh, yeah, it's just a 3D advent or 3D adventure game in the Pac Man world. And uh, you can do like mini games that take place with like use the original Pac Man game also in certain places. There's a second game in this series too, uh, and I have not played that because I don't own it. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember the bit that I played of that was pretty fun. Got this one used dirt cheap also. Uh, usually finding these first party games online, but I always end up getting them messed up. Uh, we're talking Paper Mario Color Splash. This one also came in the mail, kind of jacked up. Somebody punctured the plastic and went through and ripped the paper underneath for the, uh, the slip cover. Uh, but, yeah, I've never played this Mario game. Or this Paper Mario game. I've played a lot of the others. I've not played this one, so I really can't comment on it. <clears throat> but this game, okay, so just like with that Bayonetta, I had to play like this scavenger hunt to get a copy of this because Nintendo stopped making copies of it. It became really hard to find, and then they were going to eventually release like a greatest hits version, which I hate. Uh, so to track down a copy of this, I, I too had to go to a GameStop way out of the way on the other side of the south side. Uh, it was a better area than the one that I went to to get Bayonetta. Uh, but the people there were freaking incompetent. Uh, we're talking Pikmin 3. Once I heard that this was discontinued in the standard edition and like a greatest hit was coming out, I looked on eBay and it was like 80 bucks. I'm like, I am not paying 80 bucks for this freaking game. There was no way in hell. And then I found a used copy at that, this one GameStop on the South side. And, uh, it was like 35, I want to say used. So I went down there to pick it up. And while I was there, I bought some other games. I think I talked about this in the uh, PlayStation 3, or either the PlayStation 3 or the Wii live stream, that they kept on forgetting to put the games in the case, or they put the wrong games in the case, and I had to keep coming back like day after day to get them to do the right thing. Uh, but at least they got this right. Let me check, just to make sure. Okay, yeah, Pikmin 3 is in there. <laughs> but I played this when I got it, when I first, uh, when I first picked it up, and this game is absolutely beautiful. Like, the... The graphics that they used for the backgrounds, uh, like if there's something right in front of the screen, it is like super blurred, but everything in the background is like detailed focus. It's just, it's just beautiful the way they did it. Everything looks almost realistic, you know, as far as a cartoon can go. Um, but I really like this game. This is probably my favorite game in the Pikmin series. The graphics are absolutely beautiful. Uh, I, I'm not a Pokemon fan at all, like at all. but And I'm not really a Tekken fan either. But you put the two together, and I was like, yeah, I'll try it out. <laughs> but Pockin Tournament, I don't think I got the card with this. No, I did not, because I bought this used, because I was not going to buy it brand new. Uh, but I don't really care. <laughs> I played this once, and I was like, okay, I'm good. It's basically Tekken with Pokemon characters. It's a fighting game. Yay. Uh, this got re-released on the Switch also. Um, I didn't think it was that great, the little bit of it that I played, which is why, I, and I love a fighting game. I love a good fighting game. That one just did not grab me. Uh, Resident Evil Revelations, uh, this originally started off as a 3DS game, and I remember, uh, at the time I was subscribed to Alpha Omega Sim before he just started to uh, annoy the hell out of me and I unsubbed. Um, and he said that if you don't own a 3DS, but you still want to play the game, the, the Wii U version is the best one to go, or to go with, because... You know, the 3DS has two screens. So you have your TV and you have the screen and the, and the pad. 
So you're basically getting the exact same game, just buffed up to be able to be played on a TV. And I have yet to play it. <laughs> I also had this for the PS4. Uh, but, yeah, it's like a side story. And I think this is the one that has um, Claire Redfield in it. I know the sequel does. I think this one might too. But you're on a on a ship infested, or a, a stranded uh, a cargo ship out in the middle of the ocean with the undead. I'll play it eventually. Uh, pick this one up because... It came with a second disc, which is actually the better version of the game. We're talking Rodea, or Rodia, the Sky Soldier. Uh, this There was a Wii version of this game that was never released in the U.S., but it's considered better than the Wii U version. The, the tweaks they did, I guess, for the Wii U version kind of ruined the gameplay. But the Wii version is supposedly the better version. And if you got this early version of this game, it came with the Wii game included, as well as the Wii U version. And then they released it again with just the Wii U version in it. And luckily, I bought this like two weeks before they decided to do that. I found this at a local Target. And I was like, oh, I've been hearing about that. That it comes with that Wii version. They don't even really advertise on here that it comes with it. Which is kind of stupid. Um, yeah, I don't understand that at all. It didn't even say it on the wrapper. Like the plastic wrap that it comes with in a Wii version. Like you open it up and you're like, oh, look, that's kind of interesting. I got a different game. I got a whole other game with it. Uh, so, yeah, and then I opened it up, found that, and then I was like, okay, cool, I got that version. Then two weeks later, the Wii version, the Wii Less version comes out, and I was like, oh, I made made the right choice. I uh, haven't played this yet, but Runbo Deluxe Edition. Um, this, I think, was a digital game that finally got a physical release at some point. It was really popular, and I was like, okay, a party game. It's, a, it's like a... I can't, it's hard to describe. I watched video of it on YouTube, and it was like Smash Brothers ish, I guess, and like a running game. It was just weird, but you can play with nine different characters in here, and it comes with like all this DLC stuff, and there's a soundtrack in here as well. But I have not opened it yet because, like I say, I keep forgetting that I have all these different party games to play when my friends come over. We never end up playing the weird stuff. Uh, I made a real effort to try to find the Scribble Knots game, so I got Scribble Knots Unlimited and Scribble Knots. Unmasked, which is like Scribble Knots in the DC universe. Um, so many games I've never seen in person. <laughs> I just, this is just, I don't know. I didn't really consider my collection all that impressive. I don't have anything majorly expensive or anything. Uh, but Adam Korolik was talking about these when he started getting into the Wii U because Adam Korolik, one of the things about his channel was just because, for shits and giggles, he wanted to get a complete Wii U set because there were not that many games released for the thing because there were no there was no third party support so it was kind of easy for him and then he talked about picking these games up and they sounded really fun. I have not played them yet though, <laughs> but they're platformers and there's also like a a creation aspect to it. I think you can like draw you draw stuff. I remember on the handheld versions like on the DS and the 3DS you would draw on the the touchpad. And you can, like, I guess the computer will recognize if you're trying to draw, like, a sword. It'll be like, oh, that's a sword. Here's your character. And you have a sword now. Uh, and stuff like that. So I'm not sure how that works. Devil's Third. Well, that was, it wasn't really that expensive when I bought it, so. <laughs> uh, had to pick this one up. Shovel Knight. This was my favorite game of whatever year it was that it came out. Um, and the only time I went out of my way to download a digital game. I wanted to play this so bad, I've been watching footage of it, the trailers, people playing it online, and when I finally got a Wii U, the day that I got my Wii U, uh, I came home and I downloaded the only digital game I ever purchased for the Wii U, and that was Shovel Knight. And then eventually, it became so popular that Yacht Club Games could not say no to releasing a physical copy, so they released physical copies of this everywhere, on every console out there. And of course, I had to get the physical version. And it's a fantastic game. It's like playing Mega Man and DuckTales mixed together in like an 8-bit bow. Or wrapped up in an 8-bit bow. It is one of the best games or platformers I think I've ever played. And I got the Switch version that has like all of the downloadable content in it also. With all the extra games and everything. It's mm, my favorite. It is one of my favorite games of all time. Only reason I bought this is because of the company that made it. I was trying to get a, as many games by this company as I possibly could. We're talking the Smurfs too. I'm not a Smurfs fan. Uh, I've never seen any of the movies. I used to watch the cartoon when I was a little kid, but that was that's about as far as that went. I never really got into it. I just watched it because it was on TV. Uh, but I haven't seen any of the movies. The only reason I bought this is because it's developed by WayForward. 
see it right there. Uh, Way Forward is one of my favorite developers, and uh, I wanted to get a copy of this. I don't know if they made the game based on the first movie also. I'll probably get that if I can find it. But it's kind of funny that, you know, like, Lord of the Rings had, like, their own seal on the video games to show you that it was an officially licensed Lord of the Rings product. And some other, like, NFL and stuff like that will have, like, that little holograph sticker attached to their games to say this is an officially licensed product. This is an officially licensed Smurf product. That is stupid. Who gives a crap about the Smurfs? I convinced my buddy to buy Shovel Knight. Yeah, Shovel Knight is the best. Uh, but I haven't even played this yet. It looks like a, like a multiplayer game. Big whoop. I got it real cheap. Pick This is the newest one. I found this at Half Price Books when they were having like a big sale. Right before like the lock. It was like the week before the two days before Chicago got locked down where like all the stores had to shut down if they weren't considered essential. Uh, but Half Price Books was having a sale. A couple of friends and I went and checked them out. Found a whole bunch of stuff. One of them was Snoopy's Grand Adventure. Which I thought was the wrong. This, I thought it was a different game. I'm thinking that this was the one where Snoopy is the Red Baron. And it's like a flight sim type game. And you're like taking out other airships and all that. Like while you're riding on top of his doghouse. That's what I thought this was. I didn't look at the back. I was just like, oh, there's that Snoopy game I keep on saying I want to get. Cool, I'll get it for the Wii U. Sweet. Get it home. And I'm like, oh, it's an adventure game that looks kind of like Bonk's Adventure. <laughs> I was like, oh, shit. Uh, but whatever. Snoopy, Grand Adventure, whatever. It's a thing. It happened. Yeah, I... I I absolutely love it. I need to start playing the one for the Switch that I got because, like, I, I've played through the original, the core game, the original game. I need to play through all the other ones. Sonic Lost World. Um, I have not opened this yet. I can't remember where I got this from, uh, but it was a while ago. <laughs> but, yeah, I've never played it, but it's another 3D Sonic game. Uh, it's one of the better ones, I guess, for this console because the other one that was released is Sonic Boom Rise of Lyric. Holy shit. PS2 or Wii or something? I remember Metal G... Excuse me, Metal Jesus talked about it in a Hidden Gems video. The Snoopy game that I'm thinking of. Still need to find it then, because that's what I thought that was until I got home. I was like, ah, crap. <laughs> but Sonic Boom, Rise of Lyric, when it came out, um, this got like the worst reviews, I think, out of any Sonic game, even Sonic 06. Everyone, everyone was saying it was broken, it was super glitched, it was basically incomplete and released. Uh, multiple patches had to be released, multiple gigantic patches had to be released in order to fix the game. And I do believe this was a Wii U exclusive, if I'm not mistaken. Eventually, they, they patched it enough to the point where it's not a glitched out piece of crap. And once you start playing it after it's been patched, it's not too bad. I played a little bit of it when I first got it, which is why this is open, <laughs> because I got it brand new. Uh, not right off the bat. I found a new copy of it like a year later. Um, but what I played of it was not bad. It's not the greatest Sonic game either, but it's not terrible. I guess when you, if you were to play this, like when it first came out, I'm pretty sure that you would hate Sega and want to burn every game of theirs that you own to the ground or burn it into ash. So I haven't played Splatoon because by the time I got a copy of this, the Wii U was on the way out. So I wanted to have it just because Nintendo and I got it really cheap on Black Friday at Target for some reason. This is like the only time I've seen a major retailer discount a game made by Nintendo to like twenty dollars, sixty to twenty. That's and I, that was the only reason I picked it up, because I was like, oh, I'm probably never gonna play it, you know, online at least. So I can have it. I can play it single player, I guess. Okay, so this is another one of those games that came in an oversized box, and we're talking Star Fox Zero. A lot of people absolutely hate this game because when the game first came out, I don't think people realized that the control scheme for the game could be switched. So what I'm talking about is when I talked about Steel Diver last week for the 3DS live stream, how whenever you're doing those periscope um, portions of the game, you had it used that uh, motion detector, the, the gyroscope that's in the 3DS. So if you wanted to turn and look the other way, you actually had to be sitting in a chair that can turn and you had to turn your body and the 3DS would read that. And you, you're, you, know, you would turn in the game. Well, the way that the Wii U version of Star Fox worked was if you wanted to aim your ship at something to shoot at it, you had to hold your gamepad up in front of you and you had to like move it like this and try to line up the reticle on the screen with the one on your TV screen. And it was just weird the way they had it set up. And everyone was pissed. But you could go into the options and turn that off and use it just and play it just like a regular old game with the thumbsticks. I'm like, stop complaining. Read the manual, people. So, 
on after that the game is okay it's not a great star fox game i still prefer the original but it's not bad it could have been a hell of a lot better the funny thing is i still haven't played this it's still sealed but when you bought this early version of it it came with an extra game called star fox guard which i think is a strategy game but i have not played it yet it's still sealed but everyone tells me that this is actually better than the core game so there's that. Reading is hard. I know, right? My brain, it don't work too good. Dang. <laughs> but, like, I remember I was I was really anxious when the game was showing up in the mail because I had pre-ordered it. And I was like, oh, this is going to suck. I just spent 60 bucks on something that's going to suck. And everyone's complaining about the controls. And then I finally get it and I look in the and I read about it. And I'm like, you can turn that off. Why is everyone whining about it? Read the freaking manual, people. The game that I wanted to get, or one of the games that made me want to get my Wii U, and that is Super Mario 3D World, and I did find the one with the red for, uh, case, which is awesome. And yes, this game is absolutely fantastic. I still need to beat it. I'm pretty, I remember I got pretty close. I just ended up getting distracted by something else. But basically, I've, I've seen this game beat because I watched the game, um, Game Grumps play through the entire game. Uh, Magic Star Fox Zero will have an update on the Switch. I, I don't think so the backlash for that probably they won't they, if they would have if there was a plan for that it would have come out already uh but this game is absolutely fantastic it's like playing mario galaxy a little bit um but all the new the new uh suits that you can wear like the cat suit is freaking adorable for starters but you can climb up the walls you can like do a dashing diagonal punch down on people it's like a pounce it is absolutely fantastic family game of the rear of of the rear family game of the year <laughs> i am really tired before the uh, stream i was taking a very long nap and i woke up with like a half an hour to spare before i had to start streaming um yeah this is probably one of my favorite games on the the wii u i almost said ryu what is going on with my throat why is my tongue saying r instead of w i don't know uh but yeah it's absolutely fantastic uh i need to go back and finish this game i don't know yeah Psst. whatevs uh, this one also came in a big box, and we talk in Super Mario Maker. And this oversized box comes with ah, this huge Mario book. It's like an art book almost. Years and years of development on all the different Mario games and all that. Shows you all the different elements of the different games that you can play, like different level designs from like the classic games. It's great. Um... Mario Maker, I thought was going to be the first in a series of Maker games that they were going to release. Uh, I was really looking forward to like an OG Legend of Zelda Maker game or Metroid Maker, something like that. F Zero Track Maker would be great. Um, but this game is absolutely fantastic. I spent more time actually just playing game, uh, the levels made by people online than making my own. When I first got the game, I made my own level and I made it as hard as I possibly could, like impossible jumps and stuff. And it was so hard that even I had a hard time beating it, but eventually I did. And I called the game when I uploaded it F'd in the A. Uh, and it ended up getting like a 0 .01 completion rate or something. But it got a tons of thumbs up, which I thought was great. Like people liked it, but they understood that I was intentionally making it as difficult as I could. And that was the only level I ever made. I got the Wii U console that came with Mario Maker. I Yeah, I got the, the console long before the game came out. So I, that would have been cool to have that one too. But it's a fantastic game. I still I have the second one. I still need to play it because, um, yeah. I, what is the, the new game they added to it? Is it 3D, 3D World that they added levels for that you can make or something? I don't remember. Super Smash Brothers for the Wii U. Um, so I will keep on saying that the Wii U is not a popular console until that game came out. Go to the GameStop, the local GameStop that I always go to. And there is a line of people out the door to get a copy of this. And I'm like, I did not realize there were this many people that owned a Wii U in the area. What is happening? Because nobody seems to give a crap about Wii U. So all of a sudden, everybody wants one. Everyone has one. What? So get to the GameStop by my work. And they're like, did you pre-order it? I said, no. They're like, get out of the store then. <laughs> they're like, there's no way. Uh, go to another GameStop by my home. Hey, do you have any copies of Super Mario or uh, Super Smash Brothers for the Wii U? Did you pre-order it? No. Get out of the store. Do you at least have the GameCube adapter? Yeah. 
you're funny. And went to three different Game Stops. Everyone told me the exact same thing. You don't have a pre-order? Get out of the store. Because I think it came out the same day as like two Pokemon games for the 3DS. And so I was like, if you didn't have a Pokemon pre-order or a Smash Brothers pre-order, get out of the store. <laughs> went to my local Target. And they did not have any on the shelves. They did not have any out for display. So I just figured I'd ask. So I went up to like these two clerks who were standing behind the counter going, <laughs> looking at all these people, <laughs> looking for these games, and we don't have it. <laughs> and then I asked, I'm like, you wouldn't happen to have any copies of Smash Brothers for the Wii U, do you? And they went like, yeah, we have them behind the counter. <laughs> I'm like, you didn't put them on the shelves. You're hoarding them back here. You're making people ask for them. I'm like, that's pretty shitty. And the guy was just kind of like, eh, what are you going to do? I'm like, just give me the copy of the game so I can go home. And I found a copy on day one, which probably shouldn't have, but I did. And yeah, this game is super fun. Um, not my favorite in the series. It's probably my third favorite. But got a lot of multiplayer out of this. Uh, I had a birthday party uh, not too long after the game came out. And uh, we had a... How many people were here? Six people. We had a six-person Smash Brother fight game going on. And I had one friend who was using a, a Wiimote... I had uh, three people, no, I had four friends using GameCube controllers, I was using the gamepad, and one of my friends was using a Wiimote to play, who had never played a Smash Brothers game before, and he was standing in the corner like, I don't, I don't get it, I don't get it, I don't get it. It was uh, Charlie from uh, Epic Die Studios who usually shows up. Yeah, I know, right? Um, super fun. I unlocked everything in it, and then once I unlocked everything in it, you know, without downloading all the extra content... Um, I was pretty much done with the game. I was like, okay, I'm good. And I, that was as much as I played. And then I did the exact same thing with the Switch version. I unlocked everything I could without having to purchase anything, and I was good. This became a real hot commodity also. I don't know why, but I eventually found it really cheap at a local uh, discount or a local reseller. And it's Tank Tank Tank. This is a launch game for the Wii U, and it's basically like a, another tech demo type of game to show how the pad works on the controller. And, yeah, it's like a third-person tank combat game. There's a multiplayer aspect to it also. Um, and then, for some reason, like, when it came toward the end, like, when the, the console was getting discontinued, I was like, okay, I need to go out and find all these other games before they become, like, in high demand. Because when a console's on its way out, everyone's scrambling to get the games, thinking that they're not going to be any games available anymore. They're always going to be available, people. Uh, so I went looking for this, and it was, like, 80 bucks again on, like, you on uh, eBay or something. And I was like, F No! Uh, and then I found this at the GameStop in Indianapolis while I was at Gen Con. And they're selling it for like 15 bucks or something. And I was like, yeah, I'll take that while I can, while I can find it for that price. Thank you. And it's okay. I mean, it's, it's a launch game, so what do you expect? Let me move these closer. Also have the Tekken Tag Tournament 2 Wii U Edition. Not a fan of Tekken, but I found this for like five bucks at Half Price Books, so I picked it up. And it's okay. Playing like a, a high energy fighting game like this or like a Street Fighter game on that gamepad, not recommended. Um, I do have a knockoff like pro controller for the Wii U, but like the batteries would die very quickly on it, so I never really got a chance to play this all that much. So I haven't opened this one up, but Tokyo Mirage Sessions hashtag FE. This is a um, Persona slash Fire Emblem combination game like a collaboration type game and that really fascinated me but then i find out that it's like all about being on a dancing tv show or something like that so i don't know if it's an rpg or if it's a fighting game or if it's a dancing game or what maybe it's all three i don't know i've never opened it because i kind of want to play all these persona games in order i just need to get my ass in gear to do it whispers miranda huh that's the name of my ex-girlfriend what are you talking about <laughs> Uh, Transformers Prime, I was doing a collaboration on my channel with Captain Foley from the Trek Yards channel, and I did a, a collaboration with him and his co-host on the Trek Yards channel about Star Trek games, but Captain Foley is also a huge Transformers fan, and he wanted to do a Transformers games video with me, so we, we made it happen, we did it over Skype, and I bought a whole bunch of Transformers games around that time, so I would have games to talk about, because at the time we, he was talking about wanting to do that video... I had maybe three Transformers games, and I was like, well, I have three games in my collection. I'm not just going to talk about these three just because they're the only ones I have. So I bought a whole bunch of them. And... Oh, you're making a Serenity joke. Ha, <laughs> I got it. Yeah, okay. I forgot I was wearing my Serenity shirt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm dumb. Anyway, so I picked this one up, 
Never saw an episode of the cartoon that this is based on. Um, and when it showed up, I was like, okay, I'll try it out, see if it's any good. And man, I played through half of this game, like, in two days. I was like, this game is actually pretty fantastic. It's a third person, like, there's run and gun aspects, there's also some beat em up aspects to it. It is really, really cool. I recommend this one a lot. It's like one of the best Transformers games I've played in years. Uh, probably since those Cybertron games. So, I highly recommend it. Check it out. I talked about that in the video also as being one of my favorite ones. Uh, picked this one up while I was in LA visiting my brother a few years back at that uh, game, or what was it, game dude place. You can actually see the sticker from Game Dude. There it is. And I only bought this because it's a licensed game. And I was like, ooh, cool. There's a licensed game for the Wii U. I need it. <laughs> and turns out it was actually kind of hard to find at the time. And that was The Walking Dead Survival Instinct. You play as Daryl Dixon, everyone's favorite crying hero. Or ugly crying hero. <laughs> I've only watched season one of this show, so I never got any of the Daryl Dixon shit. <laughs> but Merle's in it. <laughs> and it's like a, a... Is it a first or... I can't remember. Is it a, I think it's a third-person cover-based shooter. Yeah. Yeah. That's that. Uh, I've heard some people tell me that it's okay, and some people tell me that it's not okay. Uh, but I'm just like, it's a licensed game. I don't care. Uh, this is one of the last games I bought for the Wii U. That's Wii Party U. This is another, like, multiplayer game that is all about using the pad. And, okay, whatever. <laughs> I wanted to have party games for when people come over. So I found this... Nintendo apparently has their own eBay store. And I had bought, like, I think a Wii U game, like, a week before I got, I found this. And when you're looking at certain things a lot on eBay, you'll get, like, suggestions on the front page. And it was like, hey, Wii Party for $5 brand new. I was like, what? And I look, and it was from Nintendo. Nintendo was selling, like, all of their overstock of this for, like, 5 bucks. And I was like, for five bucks, yeah, I'll buy it. And I did, and that's why I have it. <laughs> Haven't played it yet. It's still sealed. Um, this was one of the first games I bought for the Wii U, like the week I got the console. I picked this one up. Uh, and it's by Platinum Games, which is why I wanted it. And the game is absolutely bonkers. And that's the wonderful 101. I didn't get very far in it. I played it for like an hour and a half when I first got it. I was like, okay, okay, I need to reevaluate what I, my expectations of this game was supposed to be. I thought it was going to be a beat-em-up, because to me it looked kind of like uh, Beautiful Joe. And it's nothing like that. It's like this... It's like playing Pikmin mixed with a beat-em-up. Because <laughs> you're, like, collecting people as you're playing, and then, like, you can combine everybody together to do, like, these special attacks and stuff. It's it's absolutely bizarre. And eventually I think he says you're going to have, like, 101 people in your party. It is the strangest thing. And I need to get back into it because I remember really liking what I played. It's just, it took me aback as to what the idea behind the game was. I was like, okay, this is bizarre. They're releasing, um, they were re-releasing that? That's weird. Xenoblade Chronicles X. I think this is considered a remaster or like a complete edition of the Wii version of the Xenoblade Chronicles. Which is was like one of the most expensive Wii games out there. And, uh... How many hours is like a 200 hour RPG or something like that from what I hear. And that's why I've never played it because it scares the hell out of me. <laughs> but I've seen video of it. I've watched streams of it. And it's a beautiful RPG. Uh, it's just I don't know if I want to get involved in something that's that long. Yoshi's Woolly World. I think this is another one that came with like an Amiibo uh, collection. Like a limited edition collection that came with an Amiibo. But I just got the standalone version. I got this at the same place that I got that Tank 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 in Indianapolis. And, uh, yeah, the thing about this one is it's a really cute Yoshi platformer, but everything is made out of yarn. And that's when they started releasing those yarn amiibos that annoyed the hell out of me. Those things are ugly as shit. But the game itself looks really fun. I haven't spent a whole lot of time playing it. I need to, but it looked fun. And the last game I have was hated when it first got released, but now everyone considers it a classic. <laughs> and that's Zombie U. Um, yeah, it's a first-person... Uh, horror game and you can shoot and all that kind of stuff but the funny thing is like you can pick up hand-to-hand -hand, uh, objects to fight with and you can clobber like zombies to death and, like I remember the first time I picked up the uh, cricket mallet I was like oh cool I'm in Shaun of the Dead the video game <laughs> and it's actually really fun uh, I don't know why it got panned when it first came out I remember all the critics were like that game the hell with it and I played it and I was like what the fuck are you talking about this game is fantastic it's really really fun it's like a 
silly Resident Evil first person game. <laughs> it's I really enjoy it. It's a lot of fun. So look, I ended up like not having that many Wii U games in my collection. It still equaled out to about an hour and 15 minute long stream, which is good. Uh, I still need to work on getting these shelving units uh, fixed. Or not fixed, but worked out. Sorted. <laughs> but thanks everybody for coming to see my Wii U collection. Uh, next week will be my Xbox One collection. And then followed by probably four streams about my PlayStation 4. I have that many games for it. I wasn't really buying this, the limited edition stuff. And I said the only reason I got that Zelda Twilight Princess one was because I pre-ordered it. But, uh, yeah, next week will be the, the Xbox One collection, which will probably be a shorter one also. But then again, I said this one was going to be shorter. I actually think I have more Xbox One games than Wii U games. So that might be a good hour and a half long stream. Um, so I thank everybody for coming. Um, don't forget to check out the... Uh, Super Enabler Brothers podcast over on Corpse Flood Gaming on his channel. Uh, we do the backlog roulette on there, and that's where, like, Jason and I... Jason bought a roulette wheel, like a, like a small little mini roulette wheel, and it has 38, I think, numbers on it. And we made a list of 38 games in our backlog that we need to play, and every time we do a podcast, he spins that wheel and throws in our uh, little BB in there. And whatever number it lands on, the corresponding game on our list is the one that we have to play before the next episode. We record the next episode so we can talk about it. And in the last one, we actually did a second roulette about RPGs that we need to play. Because I keep on complaining about how 2020 is supposed to be my year where I play all these RPGs I've been putting off. And I haven't played... I've played one. I started playing Ghost or a Golf Story. And so last week, we or last time we did one, which is I think two weeks ago... Uh, we did the RPG roulette also. So I have two games I need to play before the next episode. What's the most What's the most expensive game? Oh, the Hyrule Warriors Limited Edition? Yeah, I'm not going to New York for that. Um, what does it come with? Does it just come with an Amiibo or something? Anyway, uh, so go and check that podcast out. Participate in the roulette wheel. It, that The reason it's there is for interactivity. We want to interact with people so we can hear about the games that you would have played from your list of backlog games. So, Captain Algebra, there's a thing. Do a backlog a night <laughs> for your streams. You run out of things to play, can't figure it out, make a list, pick a game from our uh, roulette thing, and there you go. You got a new game to play. A thousand bucks! Eat my ass! Anyway, also have the NES... Top 10 NES games uh, tag video that uh, Captain Algebra wanted me to do. Still need to work on it. Haven't found the time. I doubt I'm going to have any time this weekend to work on it because of all the crap going on in the apartment. Um, I still have my part five of the movies that make great video games collaboration that I'm working on. But like people keep flaking on me. And I uh, need to keep looking for new uh, collaborators to work on the video. So it's like I don't even know why I bother half the time whatever um and also have my licensed games diamonds in the rough that i'm going to be releasing pretty soon um i was going to do them when i was on vacation last week but just the whole covid thing just ruined everything i mean yeah i was at home but i had all this other stuff i wanted to do uh so there we go and uh so yeah thank you for coming i'll see you next week next thursday 7 p.m central for the the uh, xbox one live stream i'll talk to you guys later Chris, the old-ass retro gamer, signing off. Have a good night, everybody. Stay safe. Do not lick any toilet bowls, please.